This STEM activity challenge is called Gumdrop Tower. In this video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you. I want to give you a summary of what this activity is about. I want to talk to you about the materials you'll need to purchase. I want to talk about how I would run it with my class, some ideas for you, some helpful advice on how you can run this with your classroom. And then finally, I want to finish up with what's the science behind this that we're, we're, we want the students to grasp. So first, the summary. Gumdrop Tower is exactly what it sounds like. It involves gumdrops, or in this case, dots. You could use uh, gumdrops here. Uh, and it also involves toothpicks. Students will be working in groups to build the tallest tower that they possibly can. They're going to encounter some setbacks. There's going to be some times where it's uh, a little bit frustrating for them. There are going to be times when it's exciting for them. And, uh, and they're going to really have a blast with this activity. All right, the second thing is, what do we need for materials? First off, I already mentioned uh, toothpicks. You're going to need about 50 toothpicks for each group. And uh, this little box right here has got 500, and uh, that was just a dollar. So you can buy some toothpicks for really cheap. Gumdrops, you can grab a bag of gumdrops from the store, dollar store, uh, right here. I like to use dots also. You can get these for about a dollar, usually about 50 or so of those in a box. Um, again, I really like using the dots. It, it seems to work well. Uh, those are the materials. Those are the only materials that you need. As the teacher, you might also want to have a meter stick or a yard stick to walk around and kind of encourage the students and say, okay, it looks like you're at just over, you know, 12 inches or, you know, 31 centimeters. So that's something that you as the teacher, a material that you would need. That's pretty much it. Okay, now, how would I run this in my classroom? I like to start off by asking the students and talking to them about towers, about tall buildings, uh, seeing what buildings they know of in this area that's tall, uh, maybe buildings or towers in a larger city that are tall. If you have time, you can also talk about what are some things that they need to do in order to build a really tall tower. So get a little bit of discussion with your students and then transition into saying, okay, we are going to be building out of something slightly different we're going to be building a gumdrop tower. We're going to be using toothpicks, we're going to be using gumdrops, and we're going to have you working in groups to see who can build the largest tower. Now there are a few things that I would make sure that, uh, that I tell the students before we start. One of them being, as you're building, you might find that your tower wants to twist or turn or fall down. And as you're experiencing that, your group needs to figure out how to keep that from happening. Okay, so I kind of prep them for some of the issues that are going to be happening so that when it happens, uh, they're not surprised by it. Okay, so that's one something they're going to have. Another thing I talk about is the goal, the challenge here is to see how tall you can make this tower. And I'm going to come around at the end of time, and when I call three minutes remaining, you've got three minutes left. Now normally, uh, you know, building time, construction time, somewhere around 15 minutes, but I don't tell them that because... You know, some classes are faster, some are slower. When I can see that most groups are, are about finished, that's when I'll give them the three-minute warning. Then what I'll do is, uh, as I'm coming up, I will tell them, okay, uh, hands off your tower now. And then they have five seconds that their hands need to be off the tower, and then I will measure and I will read off the height of their tower. Now, you need to make sure that you tell your students this ahead of time. Because what's going to happen if you don't is students are going to build a tall tower, maybe up to here. And then as you get ready to measure, they're still holding on to it because it wants to fall over. It wants to lean over. And their tower really can't support itself. So that's why I do the five seconds. And again, I tell them before they start building that there's going to be a five second time period where we, we have to let go of the tower. Um, even still, even with telling them that, many of them are going to build it a little bit taller than they should, and when they let go, the tower is going to lean over, it's going to fall. But that actually uh, provides a, a great opportunity to talk about, you know, what they could have done to improve, you know, what could they have done better in terms of planning things out. All right, so with that being said, uh, once it's time uh, to, to measure them, I tell them three minutes left, and that, then after that, uh, I say, okay, hands off. We wait five seconds and then we read it and I, I, I read off the height and that group is going to be writing that on their student worksheet or keeping track of it somewhere. And I'll go around to the different groups. Um, after this, we have a short time of discussion and then if there's time in your class, the last question on uh, the student worksheet uh, asks them if they want to partner up with another group or two groups. It's nice to have three teams together and then see if they can combine all that they've done to build an even taller tower. 
Now, sometimes that goes well, sometimes it goes horribly wrong. But in either case, uh, it does make for some great discussion at the end. Uh, sometimes you can talk about, oh, how did it help? We had more support at the bottom. And when it doesn't go well, you can talk about how maybe the teams weren't working together. Maybe they were working together with their group, but as a larger group, not everyone was on the same page. So that right there is, is what we want to talk about. That's how I run this activity. The science behind this, really it's a lot dealing with problem solving. A lot of it is how well can you work with your group. Okay, that's, that's really what this activity is about. If we want to tie science in, we can talk about gravity, how gravity is pulling everything that has mass towards the center of Earth, including our tower. So what we're doing is we're building a structure that is strong enough to withstand gravity. And in order to do that, we need triangles. That's the key. And that's, we're going to hope that the students figure that out on their own. And then once they do, you as the teacher, we can talk about why it's so good to have a, a, a triangle. If students start building cubes, what they're going to notice is that it twists and it turns and it falls down. And so to offset that, to keep it from twisting and turning, if you've got a triangle in there, that's going to prevent that from happening. And that's why you see that in towers, or many times you see that in bridges. It's a very, very strong shape. So the triangles is what students uh, hopefully should be learning throughout this activity. Your students are going to have a lot of fun. This makes for some great pictures to, uh, to share home with parents. I know that your kids are going to have a lot of fun. I hope that you do as well. Hi, I'm Josh, also known as Science Demo Guy. If you like the video that you just saw, and if you'd like to see more STEM activity challenges like this, along with the student worksheets that go with each activity, the materials that you would need to run this in your classroom, the grading rubrics and the teacher instructions, all of these as editable PDFs, which means if you wanted to, you could customize it for your specific classroom, then check out my website, sciencedemoguy.com forward slash store. What you'll find is that I sell these as individual products and then I also sell them as packs at a discount. I have some very popular 16 packs and I've just created a 36 pack which I call STEM for the year. While you're there be sure to check out the reviews that other teachers have left. We have hundreds of reviews from teachers that have loved incorporating these STEM activity challenges in their classroom and maybe you will as well.